Hi there, and welcome to the Alberta Update, a look at what's happening in your province. I am your host, Bruce McAllister. Thanks for being with us today. Coming up on the program, Energy Minister Brian Jean is going to drop by, talk to us about the latest on Alberta's energy sector, reaction to the new federal methane rules, and the COP28 conference. Minister of Affordability and Utilities Nathan Newdorf will be here to talk about the province's latest fiscal update and what it means for Alberta's economy. And Minister of uh, Tourism and Sport Joseph Scow will be here to chat about the legislative session drawing to a close and an exciting announcement about the Alberta Summer Games. All that and more straight ahead on the Alberta Update again. Thank you for being with us today. Well, the Premier uh, and Environment Minister Rebecca Schultz are, of course, at the COP28 conference overseas, touting Alberta's strong environmental record and reputation as the cleanest energy producer in the world. In fact, Alberta just celebrated achieving its methane emissions reduction goals three full years ahead of schedule. And although Alberta is leading Canada in those efforts, that still doesn't appear to be enough for the federal government. Joining us now to talk more about this is uh, is Energy and Minerals Minister Brian Jean. Always good to see you, Minister. Thanks for coming by. Good to see you, Bruce. Listen, Minister, uh, all the good work that Alberta is doing on methane reduction, still Ottawa and Federal Environment Minister Stephen Goubeau are, are, are wading into Alberta's territory on these issues. What do you make of, uh, of their latest announcement? It's it's uh, unbelievable, really. What's going on with, with Ottawa? They've been spanked by the Supreme Court of Canada twice in relation to infringement upon our constitutional rights here in Alberta. And uh, you'd think they'd back up and understand that uh, after two strikes, um, you should probably swing differently, but not at all. They are going right at it there with methane reductions. We're not only leading Canada, first province in Canada to establish any sort of uh, guidelines on methane reduction, but we are leading North America and leading the world. We are number one in the world as far as methane reduction and how we account for methane reduction, how we keep track of it. We are spending, I hate to say it, but a lot of money on keeping track of methane because we understand how important it is to the world. And uh, you know, even there was a recent study from uh, Carleton University that, uh, of course, they didn't use the empirical data that's from Alberta, which has the best research and best uh, inventory control mechanism in the world right now. And other countries are actually coming to us and saying, hey, how do you do this better? How can we do this better? Okay, so we've already seen, as you just alluded to, two of their bills overturned. That is, of course, Bill C-69, which uh, was shot down by the Supreme Court of Canada. Uh, the other one, the plastics ban, that was overturned by the uh, the federal court judge. Still, they don't appear to be slowing down any here. As I said, uh, Bruce, uh, Three strikes, you're out. Uh, I think this is going to be the, the cap on the end of their reign in Ottawa and in Canada. This, the truth is that they just continuously do overreach. It's unlawful. It's, uh, it's clear that it's unlawful. And I wish the Supreme Court of Canada would you know, let them know that they should not be wasting their time nor the people's money. And that's exactly what they're doing. We, as I mentioned, are a world leader on methane. This emissions cap on oil and gas is again an infringement upon our jurisdiction. It's overreach, it's unlawful, it's unconstitutional, and yet they continue to do it even though we are, as you mentioned earlier in the introduction, we are world leaders on all matters relating to oil and gas, especially environmental integrity to our oil, water, and air. I've heard you speak of it several times, the Premier as well. Listen, I have to ask because the juxtaposition is is truly remarkable. We just celebrated an $11 billion investment by Dow to build a plastics facility here in Alberta. Dow was one of the companies who challenged uh, the Fed's plastics ban and had that decision overturned by a federal court judge. At the same time, uh, the federal government was out here uh, touting their role in helping bring the plastics manufacturing project to Alberta. What is up with that? Well, their role was uh, not very significant compared to Alberta's investment uh, in this particular project. It's a great project. A net zero, first net, net zero ethylene cracker in the world. So we are going to, again, set the standard for the rest of the world on how to reduce emissions. 20% of Dow's uh, uh, manufacturing is going to be here in that net zero facility. Uh, but what really surprised me is we have probably one of the most significant environment announcements ever to take place in Canada. And where was the environment minister, the federal environment minister? He was nowhere to be seen. I, I don't know whether he's embarrassed about the great work Alberta's doing 
or just mortified that we're actually far ahead of the rest of the country and make the rest of the country look pretty silly when it comes to emissions reduction and environment. Minister, when the federal government continues to impose rules that are outside of its purview uh, and not respect the rule of law, I guess the question is, what kind of an impact does it have on, on investment, not just in energy, but in the province in general? I'm glad you mentioned that, Bruce. That is the issue really here. This We saw yesterday there was a there was a uh, knockdown in oil sand stock just because of the nature of the the announcement by the federal government. This is this, this is uh, not just an emissions cap. This is a production cap. We are reducing emissions significantly from oil sands, and and this kind of play by them is really hurting companies, which means it's really hurting Canadians who invest in those companies. Uh, and I don't think it's helpful, especially when the rest of the world is so far behind us we can't even see them. You know, we're on track 19 out of 20, and then they're back at track number one. Um, Europe just just established recently some methane reduction targets. Uh, up until now, they haven't done any of that. So we really are uh, world leaders here in Alberta in a number of factors. We should be proud of it and we should talk about it and not be ashamed of it. People like Guibo that are playing politics all the time and just using you know the people of Canada as money to challenge something that is obviously unlawful should stop and we should frankly, either replace the environment minister as soon as possible federally or replace that government. And I think I'm hoping that that government is replaced soon. All right, let's end on a positive uh, on all of this. The Premier and Minister Schultz are at COP28, of course, uh, touting Alberta's uh, wonderful environmental record. Uh, despite uh, what the what the federal government is doing, investment is still coming to Alberta. We are open for business. Uh, it would seem that that narrative is getting through thanks to the work of uh, your ministry and others and, and the Premier. Oh, it's amazing. Uh, 182,000 uh, people moved to Alberta last year. Our GDP is at record levels. Uh, we are doing extremely well. Uh, but remember this, when you're building an economy like we are at record levels of uh, net migration, it's going to cost a lot of money to keep up with the infrastructure. So right now we're strategically investing the money of, of Albertans to make sure we get the biggest bang for buck on infrastructure, on uh, on investments like Dow and others that are coming to Alberta soon. We will have more announcements. We, If the federal government comes to the table on uh, what they've said they will do on CCUS, we're going to have a $38 billion investment here very soon, over 11 years, thousands and thousands of jobs. Alberta is on fire. And if you want to have a great standard of living, a great life with low housing prices and low costs, come to Alberta. It's the best place to be in the world. Well said. Energy and Minerals Minister Brian Jean, we always appreciate your time. Thanks for coming by. Thank you, Bruce. There is uh, there is Minister Jean. And as we chatted about with the minister, uh, a major announcement last week by Dow. The company confirmed its $11.5 billion investment to build the world's first carbon neutral petrochemical project right here in the province. Uh, this is the single largest investment in Alberta in the last 20 years. Here's a look at the announcement. It truly is a great day for, for the people of Fort Saskatchewan, for Albertans and for all Canadians. It's a day that's been in the works, as you've heard for a number of years, and we are absolutely Absolutely thrilled that Dow Chemical will build the world's first net zero ethylene and derivatives complex right here in Alberta's industrial heartland. This investment is a vote of confidence in Alberta. It reinforces the work that we have done to ensure our province is the best place in the country to invest and to do business. We have what the world needs. We couldn't have done it without Alberta Premier Daniel Smith. Thank you. I really appreciate uh, all the support we've gotten from Alberta. From For, for many, many, many years. You know, the support we've received at the local level, the provincial level, the federal government has been inspiring, and it's also been very crucial as we move forward on our investments here. Yesterday, you know that we announced that our board has declared its final investment decision on our project here. In U.S. dollars, this is a $6.5 billion project for Dow, $8.9 billion Canadian to construct the world's first net zero scope one and two emissions integrated ethylene cracker and derivatives facility. And then we expect our partners on this project to invest another two billion US dollars, about 2.7 billion Canadian, as this project comes to fruition. One of the key reasons that we've decided to expand here is Alberta is home to a top class workforce. It is another step forward in expanding Alberta's diversified energy economy as we do more with our resources and add value to them. And it's further proof of our province's determination to reach carbon neutral status by 2050 by developing
carbon capture utilization and storage technology. Progress in Alberta will also create big gains in the entire country. The world needs Alberta's oil and gas in every form, from crude to refined. It needs more Canadian energy for security, for stability, for peace, and for prosperity. Alberta can support Canada's international reputation as a dependable, democratic, stable supplier of energy products. And we can do more and do it more sustainably than ever as we steadily reduce emissions from production. The result will be hundreds of billions of dollars in revenues and thousands more jobs in supporting industries all across Canada. All of this is cause for celebration. And I am grateful to everyone who made today's decision possible. And more positive news on the energy front to report. Alberta's government announcing a major investment uh, in new projects to reduce global emissions, create value-added bitumen products, and drive our economy forward. Uh, the $31 million investment will support nine innovative projects that will help install new battery energy storage systems and turn oil bitumen into carbon fibers, which are used in products like aircraft, in hockey sticks, and in electric cars. If successful, these nine projects are estimated to reduce emissions by 280,000 tons each year, create more than 780 jobs, and inject $272 million into Alberta's GDP by 2025. Well, Alberta is in an enviable position. We are seeing major investments in our province, creating thousands of new job opportunities and increasing diversification. And as Alberta continues to lead the nation in economic growth, the province is forecasting a surplus of $5.5 billion for the budget year. Uh, Nathan Newdorf, who is the Minister of Affordability and Utilities and also Vice Chair of the Treasury Board, joins us now with more on what this means for Alberta. Welcome, Minister. Great to see you. Great to be here, Bruce. Thanks for having me. Let's start with the good news. Alberta is uh, is expecting to see a larger surplus than expected. Uh, what is driving that growth? Well, there's a couple of factors driving that growth. Of course, uh, we've got a we've had a relatively strong bitumen royalty uh, continue throughout the year. But I think the more significant factor is really strong income tax from both the corporate and the the personal income tax uh, realms which just shows that Alberta is not just attracting people, but we're attracting businesses and jobs and it's really helping us develop and it's creating that very stable base for our, for our finances right now. Look, I know you've got a lot of plans uh, for what you want to do with the surplus and uh, being fiscally responsible is top of the list. We've heard the Premier speak about it several times. Uh, why, is, why is paying down debt such a focus for you? Well, paying down debt is really, really important because uh, if, if you don't, it comes back for refinancing. And, and what we're seeing now is some of the financing by the government uh, between 2015, 2019 is due for renewal right now. And in the next three years, I think we have $26 billion of refinancing. And just the cost on that is going to be over $300 million annually of debt servicing payments. Like that's a lot of stools. That's a lot of hospitals. That's a lot of work that we cannot uh, invest in because we've got to pay that debt back. So we just have to manage it. It's really important. I'm sure Albertans can relate, as you well know, mortgages coming due and uh, with the interest rates uh, spiking as they have been, uh, thanks to inflation from the federal government, everything is getting more expensive. Uh, look, we always hear about the boom and bust cycle of the oil and gas sector. I know your government has been focusing on diversification. How are we doing on that front? We're doing amazing on that front. I think it's three years in a row we've led venture capital investment, uh, setting records for Alberta and amongst the top in Canada. I think this last year we've had over $534 million in venture capital invested in our tech sector. But uh, as you were talking about with Minister Jean, we've seen the, the petrochemical industry with Dow just continue to grow. We've got film and television, like the, the series The Last of Us happening in Alberta, one of the largest in history. Uh, we've got finance and financial tech also in there and agriculture and food processing. We are seeing growth all, on all kinds of new regions that we haven't in the past, just providing that stability. So we're not just a, a one trick pony, but we've got industry growth across the board. Look, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about utilities before uh, before I let you go. You're the minister responsible for utilities, of course. Uh, you know very well what it's been like dealing with Ottawa and the unrealistic demands on, uh, on uh, our power grid. Any update on those challenges and anything that Albertans need to know? 
Absolutely. We we need Albertans to know that as a government, we're standing up to Ottawa and we're standing on behalf of Albertans. We understand the grid, we understand their electricity needs, and we understand the challenges of, of where we want to go. I believe that that we so we agree with the federal government and the majority of Albertans that we want to get to a, a more carbon neutral future. We want to do that in an affordable way, which means we've got to make strategic and careful investments over a time frame that allows us to do that without seeing a doubling or tripling or even a quadrupling of people's utility bills each month. It's they're high now, they are coming down. We've got more and more natural gas coming online. So we expect to see us getting back to that historic less than 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, but we also want to make sure they're making good investments in our transmission, good decisions in our distribution and allowing the system to work to serve the needs of Albertans. That's one of the reasons why we stood up with the, the Alberta within a United Canada the Sovereignty Act, so that we can we can stand up for Albertans and say, this is what's best for Albertans. We're going to stand here and we're going to make sure that we fill the gap and we, we do what's required to get there in a way that we can all afford it. Yeah, we're going to dive into that a little bit uh, more in a few minutes with Minister uh, Joseph Scow is going to pop by. Uh, Minister, listen, thank you. I know the schedule you're all keeping up there. We appreciate the time. Great to be here. Thanks again, Bruce. Minister of Affordability and Utilities, Nathan Newdorf, joining us. Well, last week, Alberta's government announced a major investment to support post-secondary students and our agriculture sector. Uh, An $11.2 million investment is going to upgrade facilities and build new training spaces at the University of Calgary Faculty of Veterinary Medicine. This will double the number of veterinary seats at the U of C. Here is more on that announcement. The decisions we make in our colleges, universities, and polytechnics matter today and obviously well beyond today. I'm so very pleased to announce that Alberta's government is providing a further $11.2 million to support the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine. This additional funding will achieve two very important goals. First, a $10 million expansion of program capacity, an additional $1.2 million, which will support equipment for molecular diagnostics for livestock and capital funding for renovations to the clinical skills building and lab equipment. These investments will allow the University of Calgary to welcome even more veterinary students, increasing the number from 50 to 100. I'm so very excited for the University of Calgary, for the students and for the significant difference that today's investment will make for the University of Calgary's Faculty of Veterinary Medicine and of course for Alberta's future veterinarians. Huge progress being made to reduce red tape here in Alberta. Alberta's growing population and economy led to requests increasing by 86% excuse me, from Alberta's land titles office. Land titles, of course, are vital for sectors like real estate, agriculture, and resource development. Uh, Dale Nally, our Minister of Service Alberta and Red Tape Reduction, says wait times have dropped from 84 days to the benchmark 10 to 12 days, but there is more work to do. Each year, more than $50 billion in real estate transactions take place in Alberta. About $340 million in economic activity is processed through land titles each day, and more than $500 billion in private property is managed through the land titles registry. This is important work, which is why we are celebrating this significant milestone. But there's more to be done. Now is the time to take the next step to move Alberta forward by investing nearly $60 million over three years to modernize land titles, our outdated systems, and improve service delivery for Albertans. Alberta's agriculture industry is important to the province's economy, uh, accounting for more than $16.2 billion in exports. In 2022, the province's agri-food processing industry is growing with food manufacturing sales uh, reaching a record $22.7 billion last year. The government is ensuring the industry continues to grow by expanding the Leduc Food Center's agri-value processing business incubator. This expansion will allow more food processing companies to take the next steps to grow their business and put more food on tables around the world. Businesses that use this facility play a vital role in Alberta's agri-food industry. They contribute to our first-class reputation for high-quality products and our government understands this. 
We know this renovation will allow more food companies to take the next steps to grow their businesses and bring products to Canada and around the world. The fact is, when the agri-food industry thrives, it drives innovation and helps grow Alberta's economy. Minister of Tourism and Sport, Joseph Scow, joining us now to chat more about the fall session coming to a close and some exciting news for Alberta. We'll get to that announcement momentarily. Minister, thank you for popping by. Good to be here with you, Bruce. Minister, it's been a, a whirlwind of a session. Uh, I don't have to tell you, you play a, a major role uh, in the legislature. Uh, it started with the Taxpayers Protection Act. Tell us more about that bill and some of the other ticket policies that you were able to move through uh, this session. Yeah, you're right there, Bruce. Uh, we started the legislature with the, uh, the throne speech and then got right into it with Bill 1, which was the uh, Taxpayer Protection Act. And it's really great news for Alberta and Alberta businesses. Effectively, what the legislation does is prevents governments now or in the future from increasing personal or corporate income tax uh, without consulting Albertans first through a referendum. Uh, A couple other interesting pieces of legislation, big ticket items, you'd probably look at Bill 3, the Opioid Damages Cost Recovery Act. Uh, Now, this bill was passed actually unanimously by the legislature, and this really positions Alberta well to uh, recover costs incurred by our healthcare system. Uh, in dealing with the opioid crisis and recovering those costs from those who contributed to the proliferation of drugs and circulation uh, of, uh, uh, of of poisonous medication, uh, you know, so much through society. So it's uh, seeing people stuck in the cycle of addiction is heart wrenching, and and there are those who are responsible for that. And and part of this bill is well, this bill is is, is to help recover those costs. And then uh, you know we also went deep into the, into the night last night on Bill Two which is the Alberta Pension Protection Act. And uh, our government uh, remained committed to protecting the pensions and benefits of Albertans and guaranteeing that the decision to pursue a provincial pension plan is really theirs and theirs alone. Listen, so much, so much going on up there. And I know you guys sat uh, very late last night, so we appreciate you joining us today. Uh, listen, we had a motion on the so- uh, Sovereignty Act put on the table. Uh, it was important to bring forward when dealing with clean electricity regulations. Minister Newdorf talked on it, uh, uh, talked uh, about it just a couple of minutes ago. Uh, tell us more about that and why it's so important. Well, it's really just about defending Alberta's best interests. Uh, our premier has continuously done that since the moment she became Alberta's premier. And uh, she's in she's in uh, a COP28 right now as we speak, doing exactly that. And uh, so in that in that uh, in that calling, she has done exceptionally well and in so many others, of course. But uh, really, this motion, again, is about defending Alberta's best interests. And it shows that our government isn't going to be walked all over by the federal government, particularly uh, Minister Stephen Gibault and the federal NDP. Uh, this liberal NDP coalition is so detrimental to Alberta and our best interests. And uh, this motion is is our way of pushing back. And uh, so the motion was introduced. The premier uh, gave her remarks in a very strong speech in the legislature. And uh, we're, we're prepared to bring it forward again should we need it. Uh, but at the moment, it's sitting on the order paper. And uh, we'll have to talk about it some more in the spring. Well, listen, we, as you well know, we're not alone on this fight. Uh, but Saskatchewan and other provinces also standing up, uh, standing up to Ottawa. Listen, <clears throat> a big announcement. We'll switch to your ministry for a minute, if we could. A big announcement for sure. Strathcona County uh, hosting the 2026 Alberta Games. I'd like you to, to comment on the significance of that from, from three different uh, areas. Number one, for the athletes. Uh, let's talk about that. The tourism opportunity that presents and uh, maybe some upgrades to local infrastructure that, uh, that Albertans can take advantage of. Absolutely. And I'm glad you asked that question. Yesterday, we had a tremendous announcement in Strathcona County. I was joined by uh, Minister Nick Lubish, Mayor Rod Frank, Bonnie Hunka, who is the chair of the uh, bid committee for that area. Uh, and it was a, it's a great news story. It's a great opportunity to, to really showcase another part of Alberta and a beautiful community that I know very well myself. Uh, and these games, they leave a tremendous legacy uh, of enhanced infrastructure, trained volunteers, tourism opportunities, strong community spirit, and uh, really just a huge economic boost. And so, uh, you know, hosting these games, bringing in so many young people from around the province to showcase their talents uh, to to the rest of the province. Uh, spectators come in from all over Alberta and even, even out of country as well because uh, they want to see some of uh, Alberta's athletic prowess. 
and uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, really, it's a lot of fun. Huge community builder, huge economic driver, and uh, Strathcona County put forward a great bid, and I was honored to announce that yesterday. Minister, before I let you go, um, sometimes we have special special guests join us at the legislature. Uh, we have them here at McDougal Center from time to time in Calgary. You had a pretty special guest this week, and uh, I want to show some video of uh, of your not so great performance um, uh, in a putt off with a young sensation. Let's take a look. Today, as Minister of Tourism and Sport, I had the distinct pleasure and honor of hosting uh, Sedona White. She's a ten year old Canadian champion golfer just a really impressive young student athlete who has such an amazing love for the game, a uh, love for school and just a real passion for life and uh, just an incredible manners, a wonderful young lady and got a tour around the legislature, tell her a little bit about what we do here and then uh, even got a chance to do a bit of a putt off here and she showed me a little bit about how to improve my short game, which uh, as you can imagine is not my strong suit. He did very well. I'm I wouldn't say I'm surprised, but he did very well like I expected, <laughs> but I just managed, I got lucky. If you have a dream, try to go for it. No matter who says no, try to get to that dream that you love. That was Sedona uh, Whites, I believe, and uh, wow, what a what a talented young lady! Uh, Someone we can all be proud of, and boy, she she put you in your place with that putter. She sure did, uh, Bruce. It should come as no surprise to you that uh, my short game is not my strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, the reality is that uh, Alberta has some amazing athletes. They start young, and Sedona is a perfect example of that. She came in, and yes, Sedona is an amazing golfer. She uh, is a Canadian champion. But as good as a golfer as she is, she's an even better young lady. Uh, she just blew the socks off of everyone that she met uh, with her incredible manners, how intelligent she is, how well she conducts herself. And for a 10-year-old who's traveling North America and even traveling the world, representing herself, her family and her province and even her country. To have that level of composure is nothing short of, a, a, of just amazing. So, you know, being able to host her and, you know, to, to give you some background, the story, um, she won the Canadian championship and we uh, and, and reached out uh, if she'd come to the legislature for a visit. Of course, I jumped at the opportunity and thought, well, why she's here, let's have a bit of a putting champion, uh, a bit of a putting uh, competition in short in the legislature. And so we took her on the building and uh, it was a really great ed educational experience for her, but uh, I certainly got a real education uh, on, on the putting, on the putting green. Well, you were, you were a very good sport and uh, listen, well said on Sedona. What a tremendous young lady and uh, the tip of the cap to her entire family. Uh, boy, she, she's, she's going to be uh, something else. Uh, appreciate your time, minister. Thanks for all your work this session. And uh, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Bruce. Have a great one. All right. Minister of Tourism and Sport, Joseph Scow, joining us. Well, that does it for the Alberta Update this episode as we bring you uh, a first-hand look at what's happening in your province and what the Alberta government is up to. You can always view the Alberta Update on uh, YouTube at Your Alberta. That's the YouTube page or the premieres at AB Danielle Smith. And make sure to subscribe by searching Your Alberta or AB Danielle Smith and then hit the subscribe button. It's just that easy. We're going to take a bit of a break uh, over the holidays. We'll be back here again in mid-January as we continue to bring you the news and show you what the Alberta government is up to. As always, we appreciate you taking some time to join us. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being with us and we'll see you next time.